Hey guys, I am secretly interviewing this wonderful woman to help me, but through that, she will help you as well. Um, I, and I've seen it time and time again, where people procrastinate, um, starting a podcast or they start it and they don't finish it. And I'm no different. I procrastinate as well. So I have a procrastination coach, Dr. Christine Lee, um, to help us through this. So I, we were chatting beforehand, Christine. Um, I know this is going to be a great conversation. Well, thank you so much for that lovely introduction. Thank you for inviting me on the show. I also agree that we're just going to have a lot of fun yeah. today and we do not have to keep this stuff a secret. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. And so it, I, and the reason why I have you on is because I find that procrastination, like there's more to it than simply putting something off. Like there's something bigger going on. Um, so how do you explain procrastinating and like, how do we know when we're truly doing it? I explain it very simply that it's a voluntary delay of something that we probably could be doing in the moment. Mm -hmm. So to keep everything simple, I think that's tip number one, keep everything as simple as you can do it. And I also believe in my heart of hearts that we know when we're procrastinating rather than just delaying a little bit that we're really avoiding because something feels uncomfortable or undoable, or we're not feeling competent enough so that in our gut, we understand uh, putting something off, even though I need to do it right now. And that's okay. There's, there's that that's we're human and we're this, we're each miraculous processing machines mm -hmm. and creativity machines. And this is part of how we work. So my whole goal is to kind of help people not demonize the part of themselves that isn't quite cooperating so well. And the part that really enjoys maybe, or relies on procrastination that we're here for all of it. And every impulse, every piece of feeling that you have connected to your work or the fact that you're not doing your work, we're, we're going to talk about all of that today. And I hope to make everyone just a little bit braver with their own machine mm -hmm. of creativity. And I think the podcast universe is a great arena for us to do this because as a host of my own show, the Make Time for Success podcast, I have realized after just a year and a half of being the podcast host, that it is pure personal creativity to be a podcast host. There is no one telling you what to do, yeah. no one helping guide you in terms of, well, how should I structure it? How should my voice sound? What questions do I ask? It's pure creativity. Yeah. And in order to, I think, enjoy the practice of podcasting, we need to be really friendly with ourselves and knowledgeable about what makes us tick in terms of creativity and productivity. True. I like that. And you've said a few buzzwords here. One of them is avoiding Ver like, I feel like that's such a strong word and it does make you feel a certain way. Like when I procrastinate something or I'm putting something under a rug, like I, I, you feel it like physically. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever tried to pick up a rug? It's not the most convenient thing to do, right? It's awkward. It's mm -hmm. kind of, okay, what's underneath there. And we're doing something that we know isn't natural. It's like not a natural movement to stuff something under a rug. And that's what procrastination makes us feel because I think there's also a part of us that absolutely knows where we're supposed to be headed, where we mm -hmm. want to go, what it should feel like. And the moment we get a twinge that feels icky or yucky or scary, it's just our intuition telling us, well, you've turned the other direction. It's all right. Yeah. But we want to get really good at making sure our actions and our feelings and our thoughts and our goals are all just smoothly flowing with each other and that we're not fighting within ourselves to get something done. That's a pure waste of time. I think oftentimes I shouldn't say pure, but it is a time waster. Oh yeah. To have your goal here and then your actions taking you the total other direction. I know. And it, it like wakes you up in the middle of the night and it's like, 
you're working on something, but you're thinking about that thing that really you should have done or started or told yourself you were going to start a podcast. And yet another month, like my book, another month goes by and it's not done. And it's like, yeah, it, it, it can affect your productivity and keeps you up at night. Um, so why do we do it, Christine? <laughs> I think the why is very interesting, of course. And if we could simplify that, that would be great. But of course, each of us is really I know. uniquely designed to very, very u- uniquely designed. And I think I tend to see myself as someone who's tried every avenue of procrastination <laughs> that's available. So I feel like, okay, I might know what I'm talking about as a coach, because I've tried to run from everything. I'm a natural overcomplicator. Um, if there's a clear way to do things, I will find the least clear way to get something done. And that I, I, I consider that a skill at this point, but I have to know for myself that I'm not necessarily the clearest of get it done type thinkers. Right. And that's one way that I've kind of saved myself some time. I don't insist every time that I come across a new project that I know immediately what I'm going to do. I'm the person who's going to sit with it for a while. I'm going to ask a ton of people. I'm going to read some books, listen to some podcasts and then get going. So the why we do it is a really personal thing, but my main answer is that we're afraid of something. The answer is fear. And of course our fears are all very personal, all Mm. of different sizes and scales as well. So it might be that you're afraid of tech for the podcasting sphere. There's enough tech to, to really put someone off. It's just more purchases. It's more software to purchase. There's no guarantee that everything's going to run smoothly. Zoom, even the, 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 uh, the software that the world now relies on is not a hundred percent perfect. Um, but we're so grateful for it, of course. So it can be something that really doesn't have something to do with your self-worth or your personality. It can be just the fear of inconvenience, the fear of feeling frustrated. Mm -hmm. But of course, so much of creative work does involve our feelings of self-worth, fear of judgment from other people, fear of really big failure Mm -hmm. and fear even of the simple, I have an idea, I have a vision. And the fear of it not panning out in the same way that I see it. What if it's not so fun? What if it takes a lot longer to get the recognition or get the clients that I'm trying to attract? And oftentimes with podcasting, as we were talking about before we pressed record, it is a longer game Yeah, and we can't possibly predict the future that takes a lot of effort and it doesn't really ever work out exactly as we predict. So the easier answer is to procrastinate. It might not be comfortable psychologically or emotionally, but it is easier. (laughs) And I think we, as humans, we like to conserve our energy. We like to conserve our time. We like not to make mistakes. And we, I think need to find the solutions for those stressors so that we can move forward. If our vision really is to launch a podcast or launch a project, whatever you have, you need to find the small step that is doable, knowable, seeable, and pragmatic. It is going to move the needle for you without frustrating you and draining you of your energy. Yeah. And that oftentimes requires taking action, even though you are uncertain, even though you've never done it before. One of my strengths is that I like taking risks and I like learning and I like doing things that I've never done before. Yeah. So that I think has been kind of the buffer. And that's why I don't have a terrible life. Even I, though I spent several decades in pure procrastination is that I just kept bumping into different things that were working out that did accidentally kind of fit with my brain and my body and my personality. And I have a tendency of surrounding myself with really nice people that helps too. So you really want to bring your positively oriented personality, all your skills that are uniquely yours and just say, I'm here, I'm showing up. 
Yeah. I have an avoidant tendency, but I'm showing up anyway. It's okay. You don't have to hide that part of you that feels awkward or feels like you're going to flub your words. And speaking of flubbing your words, I think that must be one of the main blockers for people for starting a podcast. It is so heavily reliant on your spoken word. So true. And I will say that right as I was creating the launch for my podcast, I very coincidentally and very luckily connected with a voice coach. Her name is Tracy Goodwin. I would recommend her work to anyone. And it was just such a gift to be able to launch my podcast, even the very first episodes with a greater confidence that my voice wasn't going to buckle underneath me, that I was going to be able to pause without getting nervous, things like that. And Tracy just does magic with all types of speakers, not just podcasters. And I went to her because I knew that there was something that my voice was doing that was akin to self-sabotage that I would, my voice would even start drying up, literally physically start drying up. And I learned I've been speaking more from my throat rather than my mouth. And we're really supposed to be speaking from our mouths. So that alone is worth the price of coaching and the experience because now I have a chance of saving my throat and saving my voice instead of sounding like a scratchy, (laughs) scratchy, I don't know what animal sounds like a scratchy something, but I I'm saving my voice and sounding more powerful as a result. Mm -hmm. And that of course translates immediately in the podcast space. So there's so many things that we can do to support our desires and avoidance typically is not one of them. So, you know, give credit to your avoidance for alerting you that there's something you need to do and Mm -hmm. then find a creative, easy way to get the support, get the knowledge, get the training, get the experimental experience, do some practice episodes, be a guest on somebody else's show, see how it feels to have this time bounded interview that's just relying on your words and your thoughts it's super fun when you can be calm and say I have something to say I love that that's great advice and what I like about that is that take that feeling of avoidance and that it's telling you to take an action you're almost like taking a negative and making it a positive and it's guiding you to do something And it's funny, I had a coach um, years ago and that was what he taught me was like, okay, you're scared of something. There's a reason for that. And like, you need to not get over it, but like face it and do it anyway. And so whenever I have that in my head, like I'm scared to death of doing this, but I'm going to do it anyways. I always feel so, even if it wasn't perfect, I feel so much better afterwards. Like, I'm just like, yes. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Like, again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I just feel like I've conquered something like it, it's empowering. And so that feeling is so much better than that feeling of avoidance, even if I didn't do it perfectly. Absolutely. Because we're limiting ourselves. We're limiting our range of movement. We're limiting our emotional range when we're avoiding something and we're giving our power over to the thing that we're fearing. Mm. And it's curious to me as a psychologist, so I've been working with clients for more than 20 years and it's just kind of like, the, you know, we're afraid of the email. We're afraid of the feedback. We're afraid yeah. of the launch. We're afraid of the new job. And it's just like amazing how we activate the fear and we project our personal stuff onto things that are inanimate situations and objects. Yeah. And we then make ourselves even more afraid. So we need to, like you said, turn the negative into the positive. I feel like that is the crux of my entire business work and philosophy that wherever you can transform your fear into something neutral or positive. And you'll find everything is simpler. Everything is faster. Everything is more enjoyable, Mm -hmm. as you mentioned, and you get all the benefits, all the benefits of not being afraid, which is a non-stressed out body. Totally. The ability to breathe and speak your mind, 
learning to know yourself in the process, because when you take those risks, you feel, wow, I survived again. <laughs> I was resilient I again. I now have a podcast and it's thrilling when you actually have a body of work that you can yeah. share with other people that people can come to you saying, how do I learn to have a body of work? This is all the good stuff that there were, we're all kind of hoping for, but we're also at the same time afraid of it. Let's just be real. We're all afraid of some piece of it. It is okay, but the world needs us to still act. Absolutely. Amen to that. And so sometimes I find like, okay, there's the fear of starting. There's that kind of procrastination, but like, are there other kinds of procrastination? Because to me, it's like, I, I sometimes procrastinate the mundane tasks that I legitimately hate doing. And I'm like, oh, I push it off to the end of the day. And then at the end of the day, I'm like, man, I want to do it anymore. Can I push it off to tomorrow? Or do you know what? Like just those things that you just don't like doing. Or sometimes you start something and then for some hideous reason, you like procrastinate finishing it. Um, I, I feel like there are like, are there other scenarios where procrastination kind of pulls in? Well, as I'm listening to your examples, the theme that comes to mind is whenever we sense that something is difficult, that's a trigger for us to back away mm -hmm. from something. And of course, we are all capable of doing very difficult things. We all have a track record of doing extraordinarily True. difficult things, but it makes sense that our body would want to kind of spare us from any more of that if we can <laughs> avoid it. So- I think it's again, back to, can we perceive this in a different way where we're saying, oh my God, it's just the work needs to be done. The show notes need to be written. The guest needs to be onboarded. I need to write the next piece. I need to plan out the strategy and just treating ourselves with kindness mm -hmm. is one way of saying, wow, that wasn't so difficult at all that I can actually weather this storm, even if it feels like a kind of icky storm that you are being kind to yourself, believing in yourself and not backing away. That's your strongest action stance. You can't be any stronger than when you're believing in yourself and you yeah. have a vision of where you want to go. Really, nobody can get in our way. That's the other thing about this creativity, right? We're not in school. <laughs> this is school's yeah. over at this point. Now we're our main blocker. And think about what you could accomplish if you could eliminate yourself as the blocking factor. Right. And to me, what I'm getting out of that is like, you have control of a, how you're believing your thought processes and your actions. So what better scenario, right? Versus relying on somebody else. I have a question for you though. So where, like, cause sometimes, yes, we're, we're our own worst enemy, but sometimes if you have a boss or a business partner or something that like, it helps you take action faster, that, that sense of like accountability, um, do you weave that into your routine or system or does that help a lot of people? I think we are all accountable to some system like that. And I learned from a colleague more than 20 years ago that all work is social. And I really liked that concept mm -hmm. that we're, if we're doing work at all, it's for somebody. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, true. It's to connect with someone, even if it's not literally for someone. And so, yeah, accountability is a wonderful way to bypass the ickiness of procrastination. I always have an easier time getting something produced if I know somebody's waiting for it. That has been true of me from the time I was very small. And I do think that it's part of the adult developmental process to realize that even if I have a boss for the rest of my life, I still need to become the master of my own productivity machine. Yeah. Because in the end, it's me and my time. It's yeah. me and my time. It's me and my time. That's it. True, true. That's a very good point. Um, and you do, yeah, you can't rely on other people all the time. Sure. It's great to have accountability with partners or whatever, but 
you need to take control over your own life, your own actions, your own thoughts, your time, your productivity. I will take an example from how therapy works to describe how you don't want to over rely on other people Mm -hmm. for accountability. Oftentimes patients will come in and they'll want you to start the session or they'll want you to ask a question. And that's as common as common can be. So it's not a big deal, but it is an expression of, I don't necessarily know how to take the space. I don't necessarily trust that I'm safe being the authority of this space or, Mm -hmm. or assuming my own position in this dynamic relationship. And it's just material for therapy, of course, because we all have these trigger moments that make us say, Oh, is it my turn? And start to worry. We, we just all have that. And again, we want to just say, Oh, isn't it interesting that every time I press record, I get flooded with anxiety. I don't happen to do that, Mm -hmm. but I would imagine some people listening might do something like that, or that I feel like I go blank just before I need to really have all my thoughts together. Mm -hmm. These are habits that we've developed long before we bought a podcast, Mike. So be okay with that, but also know that every habit that you have in speaking in getting anxious in meeting someone new and interviewing someone is changeable and shapeable and shiftable. So you don't have to think, well, I'm not a confident speaker. That is not reason enough to not do a podcast (laughs) because you could become a very confident speaker. Mm -hmm. And we want to hear your voice. We want to hear what your ideas are. That's true. And I tell people all the time, I'm like, you're not going to bang it out of the park on your first few episodes that you do. Like I listened to my first few episodes and I'm sorry to the people that I interviewed, like they sucked. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm like, and I tell people your first few episodes are not going to be great. And that's okay. It's like, they will get better and you will improve with time. And as long as you take that pressure off your, like for me, I took that pressure off myself and it's like, okay, it, it, as long as I'm doing it, it's, it's all good. I've had friends slash listeners say, I can hear the shift over time of how comfortable you are as an interviewer. Interesting. And I didn't know that, but I totally believe that other people could see the progression. Yeah. That, well, here's another person to interview. It's a natural, it would be, I think, expectable that mm-hmm. I would become more comfortable as the sessions wore on. And I guess this is a message to everyone who's listening that if you are a beginner stage podcaster, if you have a few episodes under your belt, know that you're just going to get better and yeah. smoother and feel more comfortable as you go. So stick with it. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Um, how can we change our, like our knee jerk reaction or our habits or routines to cut, like what tools can you give us to help us take action versus procrastinate? My interesting first response is to slow yourself down because mm-hmm. the trigger word that you brought in was knee jerk. Knee jerk is like, um, we're acting in anxiety even before we've even processed the stimulus. And so what I've been doing lately, which I would completely recommend to everyone here is I'm starting with an insight timer, quick guided meditation every morning. Insight Mm -hmm. timer is a free app and you just search for a short meditation. You pick how much time you want to be engaged with the app. And then it's a little bit like roulette, but most of the time you win. And I just appreciate having just a few moments in the morning to shift from whatever mood I'm in to a slightly higher one. Mm. And I tend to be an optimistic person, but I'm always amazed at how well, I could go higher. (laughs) I could just feel better and less stressed and less like, oh my God, the to-do list is going to run today. And I'm going to just be spent at the end of the day. Why would we want to start the day feeling that way? Yeah. When we can just say, everything is going to come to me the way I envision. Everything is fine. The birds are singing, whatever the meditation is going to have for you that day. But I think it's really a, a privilege to be able to give yourself that frame of mind first mm-hmm. thing in the morning. I love that. That is a great way to start the day. Mm-hmm. 
is there anything that we should do when we all of a sudden get that niggling feeling like you kn- you know you're putting something off like are there like checklists or like how can I turn that off and change my habits what I do is I don't turn anything off I just I am in constant motion until I don't want to be in motion anymore. That's one thing. The second thing is I toggle. And that's my word for if I'm avoiding something, I'm going to go to something else that I might be avoiding and start that and then flip back just when I want to get bored and be done with the other thing. And I want to procrastinate. So I'm actively procrastinating, but I'm not harming myself in any way because both projects are actually moving forward. If that makes sense. Yeah. Can you explain that again? So if I find myself procrastinating on one thing, I know there's something else that I have to do. So let's flip and break away from the stress of the first thing, go to the second thing that needs my attention. And I also want to procrastinate on that thing. And then I do that for a little stretch and just keep everything tolerable basically. And then I'm keeping both things in play rather than shelving something, because I think as a former PhD student, when you shelve something, it's kind of really, I think, like self-torture because you have to restart the entire engine yeah. over and it's all on you. You have to use your life energy to do that. And it's miserable. It can be miserable. So keep things in play. It's kind of like keep juggling calmly mm-hmm. and keep filling your day with things that you want to do. Now that you know this information, now that Lindsay and I have shown you that there is a way to just improve the game for yourself, try to say no a little bit more to the things that are really just not a good fit for you. True. The things that you just hate doing, delegate, hire someone, make a list, but make it a doable list, you know? Mark the time that you're going to get the thing done instead of keeping it floating around and torturing you ad infinitum. We don't want that anymore. We want things to have an end and we want to see our productivity as not serving other people, but actually serving us. Mm. So we're serving both. We're getting work into the world, but we're also beginning that positive feedback cycle. Oh, when I work, I end up feeling really proud of myself. I end up getting new copy for my next customer. I end up feeling more like an expert. So I show up more competently on the show. It all works like this. The universe is ready to throw that kind of stuff at you, but you have to show up at the door first. Yeah. I love that. And I like how you said, like paying attention to how you feel once you do like finally, like there was one thing I was procrastinated yesterday and the day before not going to say what it is. And then I finally did it today. And I was like, Oh, like, why didn't I do that yesterday? Like, what is my problem? (laughs) And it's, but it's like, it felt good. It's like, Oh yeah, I, I, I need to remember that feeling and not wait so long. Cause I stressed myself out for three days unnecessarily. Yeah. Yeah. I have a tip for that. And that is to learn how to forgive yourself. Like, at supersonic speed that you realized, oh, I took three days to do something I could have done right there. You just want to say, oh, did that again On to the next thing that you're pressed. You're not, you're not ignoring that it happened, right. but you're not letting yourself even do it for five minutes because you know, you, the lessons learned. <laughs> so True you don't enough. need to sacrifice more time. You don't need to repeat that yeah. the next time. And that's just a practice of saying, I don't need to stay in the guilt to learn my lesson. I don't need to be guilty at all. I'm just learning lessons. <laughs> so it's that. basically stop criticizing yourself so much because that may be the oldest habit that you're bringing into your adult life. We don't need that anymore. Guilt yeah. is really not that helpful. It's not helpful. so not. Not helpful. It's so not. Um. So last thought for anyone that hasn't started a podcast yet or is started and they are not consistent. They haven't finished. Um, what mindset shift would you give to kind of turn that corner? And then I know you have a resource to share. Yes. I would say the reason why I pause is of course, there are a million things I could put in there. Right. And I would say 
you know, you really just have to be honest with yourself. Do you want a podcast? And you don't have to know what it's going to feel like, but you want to go down to the original wish. Do you really want one? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is yes, then you need to take action steps forward. You need to pick a deadline. You need to set up the launch. You need to start recording some things and know that every podcaster has gone through this consideration phase. I think it's probably totally. it's just like the beginning of podcasting. So consider yourself already a podcaster, but then shift into the next phase, phase two, which is like launch phase. Yeah. yeah. And I will tell you a little story that is a private joke between me and my friend, Diane Laser Elkins. And she is someone who worked in the podcast space, really encouraged me to start my own. And I joke that the name of my podcast will have to be four years ago because I've been thinking about doing a podcast for about four years. And I, I even made up a mock <laughs> Canva image with that title because like I didn't know what title I was going to have for my own podcast. But know that whatever amount of time you've been in this consideration phase, you can stop it. You can, you can yeah. believe in yourself. It's time to explore. So instead of feeling like you need to know what it's going to look like, just change that language and just say, I'm ready to explore now because I've done the consideration. I've done enough consideration. Ooh, I like that. That is powerful because a lot of people are all like the planning, the planning, and then the action never takes like, yeah, you've considered it enough <laughs> Go into the next phase. And I like how you say exploring because you don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to like know everything about everything to start, just start exploring. And it's okay if it's messy. Yeah. I remember that after I had launched mine, I saw someone that has a really huge following on social media and is really a competent speak, highly hyper competent speaker oozes self-confidence, talk about how anxious she was about the upcoming launch of her podcast. And it's just like, it's great to be on the other side to say, yeah. I actually have a podcast or you want to come on, you know, do you want to talk about it? Do you want to listen? It exists as soon as you activate it. Yeah. And just know that what you're going through in terms of the anxiety, that's just part of the pre-activation phase, but it's going to get much more fun and fulfilling as soon as you take the activation steps. Yeah, absolutely. And yes, and we all want to, you know, lead a calmer and more confident and creative life as, as you uh, teach everyone to do. And so can you share the resource? And then of course, um, how people can find you? Yes, thank you. The resource is called the free resource library. And it is a simple set of 12 downloadable things including a 90 day planner, a mantra maker, in case you're a negative thinker, you might mm. want to learn how to turn your thoughts into positive affirming statements, things like that to get you to have a little bit of a jump start instead of sticking with your procrastination again. And you can get that at procrastinationcoach.com slash library. And the other thing that I would love for your listeners to know about is my podcast, Make Time for yeah. Success. Um, I, Lindsay, please come on my show. I haven't invited you yet, but I would love to Yay, have I would love to on the show. And yeah, I would invite everyone to just stick around with what I'm doing and follow me and procrastination coach everywhere, including newly on TikTok, where I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> Look at you. How brave. I haven't braved that one yet. <laughs> it's, it's like the craziest universe over there and really fun. Oh, and good. I'm happy to help you jump over there. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for your tips. And I think even for having that piece of self acceptance of like, okay, I may have done these things in the past, let it go and just move on to the next phase and grab those tools to um, propel you forward. Yeah. Inevitably, we're going to have to let those go some time. Yes. So why don't we just save all that intervening time? That's Seriously, how right? my brain sees everything. Like, yeah. why don't I just save myself that block of time? You know? oh, so let's I do totally. this. Totally. I hear you. Thank you so much. You're awesome. Thank you, Lindsay. You too. Good luck, everyone. You're going to rock your podcast. Yay.